to put the cherry on top. It is Nelson Mandela's 101 birthday. To open this movie here on his birthday feels like we have put in our 67 minutes. But on the serious side, it's an incredible story. How is the reception to the film being in different countries that you've traveled to? Well, it's almost like live theater. You know, the screen comes up and it opens, and there's a round of applause. It's almost that each actor played, of course, playing the animal. When he steps in, when I walked in as Rafiki, and it was wild, people recognizing that that's John Carney, and yet it's Rafiki. We are very, very pleased, and it's taken the story at another level. As John Favreau would say, we use all the technology we knew when we did the um, Jungle Book. Now imagine a couple of years down the line where technology has advanced much more and in leaps. Now we applied and employed all that technology in the making of the Lion King. It's an African experience. It feels in dangerous. It feels happy. It feels you're too close to these animals. It makes you feel you are in their neighborhood, not yours. It's fantastic. Well, when I was told by John, the director, that I'm going to voice Rafiki, so you do all sort of sort of thinking and research to understand what this character is about. And I came around, I said, I'm 75 years old and I'm an elder. Rafiki is exactly the same age. He was there when Mufasa was inaugurated as the king of the pride. He was there when Simba was born. He'll still be there when Simba's young son and generations and generations. So it's been an incredible experience working from hand drawings to try and get the character, to try and get the passion, to try and sort of transfer your voice to represent the center and the being of this primate, who I hope doesn't look like me, <laughs> but he does to a certain extent. But it has been a joy working like, okay, now say it this way. Now, imagine I'm not here, you're talking to some African children somewhere in Africa, in the jungle, tell the story of Rafiki. So it's been an exciting experience. I mean, uh, it reminded me those days when we used to have radio stories. And we identified with these characters we've never seen. But as soon as you hear the voice that, how? Oh, you are playing in Kunzemnya, Kula, in, 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 in those uh, uh, radio series in KZN. So that was the kind of feeling and experience. Look, Africa is the home and the origin of all of us. Africa has a heritage that cannot be compared with any other country on the globe. The animals, the trees, the forest, all the big five, the small five and the middle five. And as soon as the movie plays here, people will see these animals we take for granted as part of a tourist industry, part of some canned lion by some safari hunter who wants to make a trophy out of the head of Mufasa. Those would be the relationship between. Remember when it opened in LA in, in, at the Dolby Theatre, when Mufasa had to meet his end, people were sniffling and crying behind me. And when they're thinking, but this is animation, this is really absolutely a story. People immediately identify with these characters as if we are the characters, yet they see the incredible work the CGI has created, that they look real and they are real. Sometimes I'm not clear whether that was the background created in the studio or is it real Africa. <laughs>